Finds Kevin De Bruyne. Here's KDB on the attack. Still Kevin De Bruyne. Cuts inside on his right foot. Gets the shots off. Ryan makes the save. And Sergio Kun Aguero gets the goal for us. He finds space out wide to Raheem Sterling. Crosses it in to Gabriel Jesus with a brilliant header as we make it 3 0. Raheem the Dream Sterling with the assist and Gabriel Jesus scores. Hey guys, how's it going? It is S2G and welcome to the second episode of the Manchester City career mode series. Now, the previous episode went down really well. I mean, we managed to sign Zamad Alaba, which is a massive improvement to the side. And we also won our first Premier League game of the season. Now, in today's episode, the second episode of the series, we're going to build upon that. We're going to bring in some more players and also get through some more Premier League games. So if you're excited for today's episode, make sure to drop a like on this video. 500 likes, once again, would be absolutely incredible. You guys smashed over 700 likes and also over 10,000 views on the first episode and I think there were more than 450 comments which is actually insane can't thank y'all enough for your support on the series so if you guys can drop a like on this video that would really be awesome and if you are new around here make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 18 career mode content before we talk transfers and stuff let's just get through a press conference Phil Foden is one of the best young English talents around can you guarantee him playtime or will you be loaning him out I'm not gonna be loaning him out I read most of your comments and most of you guys want me to keep Phil Ford in, in the club and use him occasionally in like the Carabao Cup and also that's what I'm going to be doing so Phil Foden will get the occasional game time and in case any of our midfielders get injured we've already got a talented player in Foden so I think keeping him just makes sense so yeah Phil Foden will be staying at Manchester City moving on next question is from Aryan Gopal rumors are linking you to Weigel and Jorginho for the backup to Fernandinho do you consider this a possible move I am definitely looking to bring in Julian Weigel because I feel like he just fits into this side perfectly in case Fernandinho is not fit and in the future seasons, definitely Julian Weigel will be the main man in that CDM role. So definitely, I'll be looking to sign him. Regarding Jorginho, I am interested in him, but you guys will have to wait a few minutes before I discuss his transfer. This question isn't really related to the series, but I thought I'd just give my two cents on it. So what do you think of Iniesta going to China? Honestly, I'm just so sad because I'm a Barca fan. I've grown up watching Andres Iniesta and that midfield role, absolutely dominating teams. And... It's just sad to see him retire, but oh well, it had to happen, and yeah, it's happening now. It's just so sad, but some of the best moments of Andres Iniesta for me personally would be that Chelsea goal, and maybe yeah, the Berlin final, the Champions League final in 2015, that goal in the Clasico against Real Madrid, the one where we beat them 4-0. So yeah, he's just given me so many amazing footballing moments, man, so... Fair play to Andres Iniesta, world-class player, one of the best of all time in my opinion. That is it guys for today's press conference. If you guys have any more questions, put them down in the comment section below and I'll get to them in the next few episodes. This normally doesn't happen, a new signing winning player of the episode and guess what, David Alaba has just done that and I think he's the first player ever to do so without actually scoring a goal or assisting a goal or even keeping a clean sheet or even being mad at the match. He was just really good in that previous episode overall i mean he didn't contribute much in terms of goals and assists but his overall play was top notch and hence he wins player of the episode and he's of course the first player to do so in this series now it is time for the fun stuff time to discuss some transfers and make some transfers in this city career mode series again if you guys have any suggestions let me know in the comment section below but for that left wing role and that cdm role we need new players so let's just go ahead and get the job done Money isn't really a question because we've got about 100 million to spend. For that CDM role, I'm pretty sure the player I want to sign is Julian Weigel because I just think he fits perfectly into that position, man. So, so good. Possession-based football is what we're looking to play and I think he just fits in perfectly. Now, this might be a bit of a controversial one because we've already got a top player like Sané in this position, but... I want to bring in Asensio because I haven't used him in any career mode so far and many people avoid using him because of his lack of pace and the fact that he's a left winger but honestly I can easily fit him into our side if, if it's in midfield or even out wide because he's that versatile and he's a player I definitely want to bring in so 
Yeah, I mean, yes, Sané is the top choice for that left wing role, but Asensio could be really good as a squad player coming off the bench. He has a similar role in Real Madrid, so it might be a bit tough convincing him to accept that kind of a role here. But even if we have to start him, he's quality, and I really want to see how he can perform for us in the Premier League. So Asensio is a transfer target. Now, this Jorginho deal, I'm going to be leaving until the next episode because I'm not sure if you guys want this because I know Jorginho is a great player, but we've got too many mids if we do sign Jorginho. So the only way I will sign Jorginho is that if we do a swap deal with Yaya Torre and if you guys can agree to that then okay we will sign Jorginho. So go down there in the comment section Yaya Torre for Jorginho. Should we do it or not? Let me know in the comment section and if you guys agree to it next episode deadline day we will make this transfer. All right, time to get into some transfer business. Julian Weigel, let's approach to buy him. We'll get this signing done, then get into a game, and then we'll complete the Asensio transfer. So that is the plan. So first up, Julian Weigel, let's begin the negotiation. So he's valued at about 15 million. I reckon we should be able to get him for about maybe 16 to 20 million. Let's try that out. Submit offer. We would be willing to pay a 16 million fee. That's more than, well, 19.5. That's, that's, you know what? That is all right. That is all right. They want to sell on clause as well, and I don't anticipate selling him. So 19.5 for Julian Weigel. I'm pretty happy about that. His weekly wages are pretty low as well, so we should be able to get a good deal out of this transfer. So let's just get the job done. 40.5 is his wages uh, in, of course, thousands. Um, I'm going to offer him a rotation squad role. I'm sure he will accept that. And there you go. Absolutely perfect. With Fernandinho potentially dropping down in overall, I'm sure him being they're available for us to use will be really helpful so four years oh, i should have offered five oh i should have offered five but oh well four years is good enough no release clause that is perfect to me and sixty-three thousand. no oh, he wants a big bump in his wages um let's remove the appearance bonus and just submit offer and just see what happens and okay he wants seventy-one thousand pounds now all right all right we will give him that because we are manchester city and that all oil, oil money is definitely coming into good use but there you go julian weigel is now a manchester city player in the previous episode i asked you guys what kit number should i give our man david Alaba, and you guys wanted me to give him the kit number he had at bayern munich to keep it realistic and fun so we're going to do exactly that we're going to be giving david Alaba kit number 27 because i think he wore that at bayern munich and for now i'm going to give julian weigel the number six kit number let me know what kit number should i give him in the comment section for now we'll of course give him the number six kind of feels realistic because six usually is worn by those controlling midfielders so there you go Weigel will wear number six. Now we've just got to try and sign Asensio. Then you guys need to decide on Jorginho. And we'll be pretty sorted. But before anything else, time to get into a game. Everton in the Premier League. Let's go ahead and get a win. It is time for our second Premier League game of the season. This one against the tough Everton side. We know they've got some good players. So this will be a tricky game. Although we've got a solid squad in here. Sane Aguero. Bernardo Silva getting his first start. I just want to see how he performs because we know he's extremely talented on the ball. In midfield, I've decided to give Julian Weigel his debut. So I'm really hyped to see how he can perform on his first game in this series. Laporte gets the game as well. Edison in goal. Solid team. I'm expecting a win. Now Leroy Sane. This is where he's extremely dangerous. Aguero back to Sane. And here we go on the attack. Leroy Sane with that pace. Still Sane. Cut back inside. Oh, that's... Not the best of cutbacks. You expect more from Leroy Sané. KDB. Oh, that's a brilliant pass to Sergio Aguero. I'm not sure if he's on. He is on. Aguero gets the shots off Mangala, former City player. Putting in a good tackle there. Now Bernardo Silva out wide. He goes past one. Goes past another. Bernardo Silva finesses this one. Oh my god, that would have been a sensational strike from Bernardo Silva. David Silva finds Weigel. Now Sergio Aguero. Weigel going forward here. Don't, don't see that too often. But here's Leroy Sané on the attack. Sane cuts this one inside. Weigel, can he score on his debut? Pickford with an insane reaction save there. A debut goal for Weigel would have just been perfect, but oh well. Henk Tosun again, playing it in behind to Sigurdsson. Sigurdsson has got it past my defender. Company needs to defend well. What a save from Edison there. I don't know what was Company doing, but he was caught there. He was really caught, but again, a brilliant save from Edison. That is why we have him as our goalkeeper. That was phenomenal stuff from him. This could be something we can exploit. I'm going to try a set piece. Let's hope it works. I'm going to play this one to Leroy Sané. Come on, shoot. Sané shoots. What a goal. This set piece technique is so overpowered in this game, guys. I'm telling you, you guys should try it out if you're wanting to get some goals 
pretty easily and it works once again for us easy pass from I think it was De Bruyne to take the free kick and Leroy Sané buries that one into the back of the net fantastic goal from the young German Bernardo finds Aguero what a chance for Sergio Aguero and the Argentine Man City's top scorer gets another goal for us man he scored so many goals for City and here's another one to add to his tally good finish Bernardo Silva really shining in his first game for us gets himself an assist for that great pass as well look at the weight on that absolutely perfect and then Aguero does what he does best puts the ball into the back of the net Leroy Sané what a pass that is to Sergio Aguero this could be a phenomenal goal from Manchester City and it is that pass from Leroy Sané had just the perfect weight the perfect curve and then when it's Sergio Aguero running in behind your defense you just can't do anything to stop him that's one of the passes of the season this is contender for goal of the month because of just how good that pass was from Leroy Sané and Aguero grabs his second of the game what a performance so far from us Sergio Aguero gets it back De Bruyne now fires this one to Leroy Sané Sané fake shot cuts this one inside maybe David Silva could score he misses the ball altogether and Baines clears time to make some changes as Aguero is on a hat-trick I'm not bringing on Gabriel Jesus because I want him to try and get that hat-trick but I am going to be bringing on Gundogan for David Silva whose fitness has gone down a bit we will play De Bruyne on the left hand side and I'll also actually bring on Danilo for Kyle Walker because why not and maybe Raheem Sterling let's bring on Raheem Sterling for Sané let's do that and yeah perfect let's just try and see what happens now 3-0 up already so not too worried about that complete chaos in defense right now Walcott gets the shots off and Edison what a goalkeeper this guy makes some of the most insane reflex saves I've seen in career mode and he gets the job done once again for us the region it's corner for Everton come on get the ball away oh no Funes Mori and uh I don't know why I'm conceding such useless goals man this was such a crappy goal to concede man from a corner we couldn't clear it away Funes Mori their defender takes advantage and scores making it 3-1 uh, even in the previous game we conceded a really stupid goal man but oh well we are still leading three goals to one there you have it guys we've managed to beat Everton three goals to one a great result for the club three points secured and honestly we played some great football so far in this series we've been playing some fantastic football and I'm hoping we can keep it up just want to help uh, try and fix the defensive issues because yeah we're conceding some really silly goals which in the big games is going to be like unacceptable besides that gotta give Aguero credit for a brace and overall really happy with our performance transfer offer for Winston company there's no way I'm selling Mr. Captain Fantastic especially for just 23 million pounds I know he's getting old but we can at least get one good season out of him so yep I'm not going to be selling company at least this season we've now got a game against Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup and I'm going to be using my second team and simulating this one honestly I don't really care about the Carabao Cup it's not even in our board objective so doesn't make sense playing those games unless we get to the finals so I'm probably going to use this team and simulate the Carabao Cup and I'm going to be giving a lot of chances to my youngsters in this tournament so Diaz, Phil Foden, Mendy all these players will be getting good opportunities even on the bench I've got the likes of Zinchenko and all so yeah it's a good way for our youngsters to prove themselves so let's see what they can do Nottingham Forest away from home I don't want to get knocked out in the first round because even though it's not my first team it's still a really solid team and way better the Nottingham Forest team so let's see what happens in this one what how have we just lost on penalties oh that is just so annoying man we've been knocked out in the Carabao Cup but oh well as I said I don't really care about this tournament that much so it just gives more fixture space and less fixture congestion and will help us focus more on the Premier League and then the Champions League time to get some training done it's really helped the likes of Phil Ford and who's just touched 70 overall which is good and look at that it started just getting even better and A in training Brahim Diaz as well is doing well well Zinchenko he better start practicing properly because an F is not acceptable this is actually really interesting a transfer offer for John Stones but the thing is I know I'm not using him that much and he's only 80 rated we've got the likes of company Otamendi but the thing is both company and Otamendi are pretty old so I don't want to sell a talented player like him so we are going to keep John Stones and maybe in like a few seasons he could be the man leading our defense taking a look at the transfers going around abroad PSG have sealed the deal for Stefan Zavri 36 million pounds that's a great transfer but this one isn't Barcelona have signed Sebastian Giovinco I have no idea what they're up to oh, such a weird transfer uh, Juventus have sold Marquisio to Spurs for about 30 million pounds 
So that's a really interesting transfer. So teams are strengthening all around the world. We need to do so as well. And yes, the player I want to sign is Marco Essencio. I know, uh, I just kind of feel it's a bit of an unrealistic transfer. At the same time, I feel it's a transfer that could happen because it's City. They have the money to sign any player they want. And Asensio isn't really the first name in the team sheet for Real Madrid. So I really want to just try out Asensio. And that's the primary reason I want to get him at the club. Because he's such a good player. And even as a Barcelona fan, I appreciate his talent. And he's just such an amazing player to have. And he's so versatile as well. So that really helps. So let's just get this transfer deal done with. Marco Asensio to Manchester City. We're now negotiating with Zinedine Zidane or Zizou for, of course, Marco Asensio. Is there any player I can use in the swap? Probably not. So we've got 80 million. So this transfer shouldn't be much of a problem. I'm going hard. First transfer offer itself, 50 million pounds for Marco Asensio. 80, 84 rated, 21. Okay, so they want 66.8 million pounds. Now that is not happening. Proposed new transfer fee. Let's put in 60 million pounds. And they can keep the sell-on fee because I doubt I will be looking to sell Asensio anytime soon. Oh, they still want that 66.8. You know what? It's Asensio. Top, top talent. Scored in many Champions League finals. I think two, if I'm not wrong. Let me know in the comment section how many goals has Asensio scored in a Champions League final. But regardless, 66.8 million for Marco Asensio. I honestly think it's a good transfer. Now time to negotiate for his contract. Let's try and get this done as cheap as possible. But I doubt it will be cheap, man. £170,000 per week. That's his current wage. Squad role important. That's perfect. Um, we're making good progress. I want to give him a five-year contract. Just makes sense. Him and Sané. The competition both these players are going to have now for that left-wing role. It's going to be fun to watch. But I think both of them will get adequate game time because of how intense the fixtures can be with the Premier League and the Champions League. So, yeah. Disregard release clause. Perfect. What even are those bonuses, man? I'm just going to offer him 200,000 and that signing bonus, which itself is insanity. Okay, 220. This is an expensive transfer. I did not expect this to be this expensive, but we are City. Let's put that oil money into some good use, man. Marco Asensio is now a Manchester City player. In the comment section, what kit number should I give this guy? Let me know. We are the only team so far in the Premier League who've won both their games. We've scored six conceded just two, so we are doing really well in the Premiership. Now we play Bournemouth, which is going to be interesting because they're four. They've just drawn one game and won the other. So away from home against Bournemouth could be a tricky game for us. And our new signing Asensio, I will be giving him his debut. Let's see what we can do in this one. I'm not taking any chances for this game against Bournemouth because we know they're doing well in the Premier League, at least so far. So I've gone with a really strong 11. Pretty much my strongest 11 apart from maybe Sané instead of Asensio. But I wanted to give Asensio his debut to see how he could perform. And also I'll probably bring on Sané in the second half. But maybe benching Sané could be a mistake because Sané was man of the match in that first game. So not sure. But let's see what we can do against this tough Bournemouth side. Oh Asensio wins the ball back in a great spot. Asensio on his left foot gets the shots off and almost scores on his debut. What an attempt from Marco Asensio. We know his left foot is magic. And that's why I decided to go for the shot. Number 9 kind of suits him, but I'm not sure what kit number I should give him. Let me know in the comment section, but he almost scored there. Now Aguero does so well to hold up the play. Place this one to Asensio now. He's going forward. That is a brilliant cross, but there's no one to attack it and Cook clears it away. We aren't really being able to dominate this one as Bournemouth are actually keeping possession really well. In fact, I'm sure they've outpossessed us. In this first half, at least so far. So we've got to improve. Oh, that's not good. Callum Wilson has made a great run. That's a brilliant pass to him. And guess what? He scored. Bournemouth lead one goal to nil. A fantastic finish from Callum Wilson. Our defence just was caught napping there. What was Otamendi doing? I have no idea. He just left Callum Wilson unmarked. And then Wilson one-on-one -on -one versus our goalkeeper. He has a good chance of scoring. Does so. One nil down. I think changes need to be made. Oh no, maybe another chance for them. I'm not sure why the referee didn't blow the whistle there because that looked like a foul. And we can potentially hit them on the counter here. As Asensio is now one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He should score this. What? Okay, he might score it. No way. What was that, man? Raheem Sterling at the edge of the box. Still Sterling. Still Sterling does so well. Sterling gets the shots off. Begovic, can you please not? Uh, Begovic is definitely the most annoying goalkeeper to play against in FIFA. Finds Kevin De Bruyne now in behind to Raheem Sterling. This is it. This is what we need. A chance for Raheem Sterling. Oh, man. This is what I was talking about at the start of this series. Raheem Sterling's finishing can cost us heavily, man. 
That is so annoying and so disappointing, man. Honestly, guys, I'm an idiot. I forgot to put Leroy Sané on the bench for some stupid reason, so I can't sub off Asensio, who's been okay in this game, nothing spectacular. I'm bringing on Gabriel Jesus because just the added pace will help, and also Bernardo Silva in midfield because we need to attack now because we're 1-0 down just 20 minutes to go. Fernandinho. Great pass to Bernardo. Now Kevin De Bruyne. De Bruyne shoots. What a goal from Kevin De Bruyne. Well, I was going to say goal of the month was probably going to go to Aguero, but I guess not. De Bruyne definitely has won that award, but what a strike from Kevin De Bruyne to get us right back in this one. Holy shit, the right foot of dreams, man. From the outside of his boot as well, on the half volley. How has he done that? Look at that from KDB, man. Absolutely sensational. What a goal from the Belgian. Oh, have a look at that again. Such a sweet strike. Top bins from Kevin De Bruyne. Can it get any better? Probably not. We've got KDB. I know he's a good free kick taker. He whips the ball in and company. What has he just done there? Company with one of the best headers I've seen in FIFA. Holy shit. How has that just happened? Company. Captain Fantastic. Potentially gets us the winner in this game against Bournemouth. I can't believe what's happened here. KDB has completely turned his tie around, this game around, with a goal and an assist. Oh my god, what a performance from KDB. That's why he's one of the best in the world. And company, tapped in fantastic, saves the day by scoring a brilliant looping header against a Begovic who was seemingly unbeatable. What a performance, man. Back to Bernardo, some good link-up play between the both of them. Cut back to Kevin De Bruyne. Now Raheem Sterling, oh, he couldn't get there. The pass just wasn't good enough, in my opinion. Begovic gets there first, but I guess we will be taking the three points away. And there you go, guys. The game comes to an end. I have no words to describe this game because it was so insane. I mean, we were 1-0 down, 70th minute. Guess what? De Bruyne scores a fabulous goal. We then get a free kick. De Bruyne again puts the ball in. And company with one of the best headers I've seen in FIFA. Looping header over the keeper. Gets us the winner. Just perfect, man. This series is going so well for us. The gameplay has been top-notch and I hope we can keep that up. Honestly, what a way to end off the episode by being top of the league. Three wins out of three. Things are going so well for us and it could get even better because next episode, depending on what you guys want, on deadline day, we could bring in Jorginho. So let me know in the comment section if you guys want that deal to go through. But yeah, next episode, it's not just transfers. We've got more games and this time against some top, top sides. Champions League action begins. A game against Liverpool, Napoli. It's going to be a freaking amazing episode. But before we end off this episode, you guys need to vote for your informed player of the episode. Your two nominees, Kevin De Bruyne. He just had to be nominated for this one. What a performance in that second game. And also... Leroy Sané, he was again brilliant in that first game. Aguero just misses out on getting nominated because of his performance against Bournemouth. But you guys can vote by clicking the i button on the top right of your screen. Now before we end off this episode, it's time for you guys to find out August goal of the month. I'm pretty sure you guys know whose goal it is, but have a look. Kevin De Bruyne's stunning effort against Bournemouth wins him this award. And tell you what, this strike was out of this world. The power he managed to generate behind that shot was on through and also the situation we were in. We were losing to Bournemouth at that point of time and we needed a moment of magic. It came from Kevin De Bruyne and we of course did go on to win the game. So fair play to Kevin De Bruyne. He wins this award for the first time this series and I have a feeling he's going to win many more because he's just that good. Alright guys, that is pretty much it for today's episode. Really hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm loving recording this series guys. Honestly, it's just so much fun. So let's keep it going. Tomorrow you guys want a Man City episode? Drop 500 likes and I'll get you one. So that's it for today's episode. Subscribe for more FIFA 18 career mode content and I'll see you guys very soon with another episode of this series.